Hi everyone, welcome to another video in the Battalion Development Kit uh, series. In this video we're just going to take a look at things like uh, ladders, vault volumes, um, cam cameras and cinematics. Let's go back to our final map, uh, a map that ships with the, the mod tools. Uh, you can ignore all these errors here. I'm going to take note of this camera because we want to add in a spectator camera later. Uh, I'm going to take, take note of these vault volumes with the little red arrows. Um, but more importantly, I'm going to take a look at these uh, boxes here that I kind of want to use. So next, I'm going to click this little button here to browse for it in the content browser. There it is. I'm going to use the other content browser to... Actually, I already have it there, don't I? So I can look back here. It doesn't really matter which one I use then. And go back to my map. Okay. And then I'm going to put my uh, box that I found here. I might make a couple of them. Uh, and in this case, it's actually useful to change that. Ah, it's a bit too, uh, not quite right. There we go. So I'm going to put two there. Um, and then I'm going to search for a vault. And just put the vault volume sort of in the middle there. And I can look down from above, press F to sort of focus on it, and I can make that a bit smaller, put that around the edge, readjust slightly, there we go, lovely. Oh, so we're a little high, and then put that down like that. Actually, we do tend to have them... Uh, thin tops, just as a way of, just sort of a practice we have. Okay, cool. And there you go. So now if we run it, run over there, we will be able to do that. You'll notice that the fonts are slightly different in the mod tools. That's just because we had to rip them out for licensing stuff. Uh, but it will look, it'll look nice and fine and dandy in the in the main game. Okay, cool. So. Next thing, let's take a look at ladders. Um, so say we want to get up the side of this wall. Uh, we can first type ladder in our classes. And what you want to do is make sure this red arrow is pointed out towards the player. I'm going to scroll my scroll wheel just so I can have a bit finer control. OK, cool. And then I'm going to extend that up to the top. I think first we'll sort of do the stride. So I think that kind of looks good. We do obviously have a, a number that we use on all of ours in, in game. Um, in fact, let's do that. Let's go double check. Um, oh, but do we have a... Ah, we don't have a... Um, I'll add it here. But uh, I will... We can, we can, we can add that um, as a note uh, somewhere at some point to help out. But it's kind of what looks right, really. So we can put 30 there, and we can put the number of steps sort of up to the top like that. Uh, I might increase the ladder height by maybe 10. There we go. So it's just peeking over the top. And then that's sort of like the concept, or the sort of back end conceptual part of the ladder done. And I just need sort of a mesh to represent it now, because if we press play, you'll notice that we can't see anything. So. Let's just replace that with a ladder. So go into content, type ladder, and now I believe the only ones we have are these short ones in here, which is kind of kind of frustrating. But I think in this particular scenario, we will make do and just. Well, just sort of copy and paste it up the top. Not very uh, precise at all. It gets the job done. There we go. Lovely. Okay, cool. So if we press play now, I should be able to run all around and get on the ladder and get to the top. We could have uh, just walked up to the wall in the previous one without putting the ladder mesh there, but that doesn't quite feel right. <laughs> so there we go. We're on top of the building. Okay, 
So another interesting thing to take a look at is the startup cameras. So it looks like I was already playing with them in here actually. So let's delete that one and start again. Um, so if I type static in here, you can see we want the static act, static spectator camera actor blueprint. Bit of a mouthful, but let's drag it in and then let's. Uh, I think I have to right click on it and pilot it. There we go. And I want it to look at the site, sort of like this. Oh, that's good to me. Eject. Great. And obviously you can play with it a little bit if you wanted to. Change the field of view. Some stuff like that. There we go. Um, whatever looks right for your mod. And you can have multiple versions of these. Uh, you could have one that was sort of overwatching, kind of like this. Um, I don't know if you can... I think we have to yeah, do that every time. Go back down. I think, I think there's uh, some, uh, <clears throat> some shortcuts to be able to set this kind of stuff maybe a bit faster. Okay, great. And I'm just going to eject that. And there we go. Lovely. So, um, next thing is cinematics. Let's try try out that. So we notice actually we don't have any of these in the main game, but it was a feature that we added and uh, didn't have enough time to implement ourselves for all of our maps. But for you guys, um, you could definitely use it. So if you search for cinematics, if I can type, there we go. Just drag it into the world, it not really matter where. Oh, looks like I've already got one there. I was playing with it earlier to make sure I had everything in place. Um, and let's clear that. All right, great. So if we go to the content folder, get rid of that, create a folder called cinematics, and then go to cinematics and then go to level sequence, find our mod, save it in the right folder. I'm just going to call it new level sequence. Uh, save all. Okay, great. So next I'm going to find that cinematics object and I'm just going to give the opening Cinematic, a reference to our sequence now. It thinks that there's, uh, yeah, there's two, but there's definitely only one, and that is us. Um, okay, well, if this happens to you, maybe just restart the editor, clean up a few things, see what happens. But we'll just keep it as new level sequence there, and we'll just click the create new camera. Cool, I think the uh, Local length there feels a bit crazy, so we can uh, help ourselves out there a little bit. You can obviously always bring the camera back a bit more uh, without having to change that. There's probably some standard focal lengths that you should probably use too, uh, but I'm just going to play around uh, a bit wildly here. Okay, so I'm going to close the component there, and in the transform, uh, I'm going to add the little button there for a key keyframe. I'm going to boop. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring it around. I'm gonna move. Ah, sorry, I jumped the gun there. I'm gonna now. I'm gonna move it around. I'm gonna add another keyframe, and I'm gonna move it over to here, and add another keyframe. Cool. Now, because I've just uh, <laughs> because I've keyframed. The whole of transform, the way the uh, inter um, uh, the the lerping or the interpolation between the two points <coughs> works is that it does something wild with the rotation. Now we could uh, we could go in and try and fix that, but for now I'm going to kind of write this off as a bit of a funky level. Uh, I mean, let's face it, no one's playing this, but uh, uh, it should be it should be enough to show you what what's going on here. So uh, with that saved and it all linked up, so cinematics has it. Um, then at the beginning of the level, or beginning of the game rather, once everyone's ready up and the time has gone down, at least in Wartide, um, it will it will play the cinematic, um, which is kind of cool if you want to show an overview of the map. Uh, in editor it won't work though, um, but you, if you get into the game, which we will do uh, soon, you will be able to test it out in there. Um, right, so another thing I wanted to mention was we've used content here from the aim map. Um, and the main content folder in the tools. So we've used things from, from here. Typically, uh, our recommendation is to not do this. Um, it means that if we change anything in the game or in the mod tools, 
content that you might have used that we've provided might change and it then might change your mod which we, we don't particularly want to do, we want to have some consistency, we don't want you having to constantly maintain your mod just because we changed something. Um, so it's probably best to copy as much content as you can into the main plugin folders. Um, obviously earlier we copied in those uh, blueprints. This is for somewhat of a similar reason. We find that certain things, if it's a uh, logic based like blueprints, um, copying it from our main game and then the mod sort of assuming they exist in the game when it loads sometimes causes some issues and uh, we've had a few crash crashes with that so um, in this particular case or in every mod you make it's best to just copy over that uh, blueprints folder. Um, in our case I would also recommend copying over the, the art as for the reasons just mentioned but um, I would create like a, you know an art folder or an imported folder or, or what, what however what may make sense for your mod and just just bring those in so uh, for us, we would take this, we would just drag and drop it somewhere else, we would copy and paste, and then just make sure you have the materials as well um, that they're using, because it's one thing having the mesh in your mod, but it might be a reference in a, um, a material that is also uh, in the game. Um, now, I've tested uh, this just earlier, and I actually could get it to, to, to work, so it, it, it did reference the, the, the meshes and everything without me having to put it inside my mod, but I think it's really best practice for you guys to just copy that content in your mod, if you are going to use it. Um, okay, so as another quick thing, I guess, uh, when you are looking to see what's referenced by what, you can right click and go to uh, Reference Viewer, and you can see that, here you go, we use this box in a map and the Kev's mod map, and you can see that it has a dependency on the material, which uh, we would also have to bring over as well. Uh, this is partly why you'll also see in, let's see, uh, in the example mod, there's a UI folder with some uh, map related things in, mainly because we needed to bring those over too, otherwise we, we got a crash. I'm sure we'll cover that in the next, uh, the next tutorial though. Uh, right, I think that's everything that we need to cover in this. Um, if, yeah, I think I think we're good. Um, so the next one, we'll take a look at the mini maps, the loading screens, um, and how to set those up, because um, it is kind of a, a bit of a process, and getting it right is is maybe a little bit more involved than um, you, you might think it is. Okay, cool. Well, uh, see you on that one.